brochure said this to will make you look 10 years younger. It made him look 10 years stupider. <laughs> and for windy days, it has an optional chance wrap. <laughs> you know, this guy's got more problems than a $2 watch. You know, he, he signed up for one of those self-improvement courses. And after it was all done, they didn't give him a certificate. They gave him a refund. <laughs> But this next thing I'm going to tell you is true. It actually happened. You know, sometimes the true stories are the best. I was coming back from the West Coast, and, and we changed planes in Denver. And it was a busy airport that day. The gate where I was, all the seats were taken, and people were standing as well. One guy was sitting there reading the paper. Then he got done. He stood up, put the paper on the seat, and walked away. Then a guy who had been standing nearby came around front and sat down on the seat on the top of the paper. you got to picture this. Then the guy sitting next to him looked over and said, excuse me, are you reading that paper? <laughs> now, there are dumb questions. And there are really dumb questions. That was a really dumb question. And the guy handled it well. He said, yes, I am. Stood up, turned to me, sat back down. <laughs> Then, at that same gate, I found myself um, uh, staring at a woman across the way. And, um, and, well, she looked so familiar. She looked like somebody I'd gone to high school with, uh, only older. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so obvious that I was staring that I thought I should go over and apologize and explain, which I did. I went over there and I said, you know what, you look so familiar. I said, uh, where do you live? And she said, Milwaukee. Well, that's where I went to high school. And I said, uh, what's your last name? And she told me it was the same last name. And now I'm thinking maybe this is the older sister. Possibly even the mother of the one I went to school. I, I said, where did you go to school? And she told me it was the same school. I said, what year did you graduate? And she told me it was the same year. I said, you were in my class. And she said, really? What did you teach? <laughs> I, I must look worse than I feel. If that's possible. I was standing in the shuttle bus at the airport and a pregnant woman stood up and offered me her seat. I'm at that age where I don't want to do stuff I couldn't do even if I wanted to. But I was reading somewhere, if you want to improve your life, you should make new friends. And I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. So last month I made two new friends and my life didn't improve at all. And I'm stuck with two new friends. <laughs> And I think, uh, you know, the, the older I get, the more I think uh, the world is moving too fast. Hmm? That, don't you think? Nobody takes the time to be neighborly anymore. The only time I see my neighbors is when they take me to court. <laughs> but I think back when I was a kid, you know, things were different back then. You know, back then, if you didn't make the grade, you didn't pass. You know, they held you back. We had, we had guys in sixth grade that could buy beer. <laughs> but that's all changed now, hasn't it? And I, and I find at my age, you know, there's just a lot of stuff I don't understand. You know, for example, body piercing. What the heck is that all about? You know, some of those kids look like they've fallen face first into a tackle box. <laughs> I was standing in the checkout line at the grocery store, and the clerk had a pearl in her nostril. And I'm wondering, did she puncture her nostril so she could put a pearl there? Or, or maybe is it glue gun? I didn't know. So finally I asked her, I said, how do you keep that pearl on your nostril? And she put her finger up there, turns out it wasn't a pearl. <laughs> <laughs>
But she didn't have much to say to me after that. You know? <laughs> Just put my stuff in the bag, you know, and then she got to the last item and she looked up at me and she said, you're single, aren't you? And I said, you can tell that from what I bought. She said, no, you're ugly. <laughs> But I, I, I got to thinking maybe it's about time I do something with my life to make a difference. So I got involved with that Big Brother organization, and it's pretty neat, you know. Now, once a month, a 90-year-old guy picks me up and takes me to a ball. You know? Even my interests are changing now. My, my interests are, for example, the first thing I do in the morning when I get up, I get a cup of coffee, the newspaper, a pen, and the telephone book. And I sit down at the kitchen table and I take the names out of the obituary column and cross them out of the phone book. <laughs> checkbook into the bank to have it balanced, and which takes forever. You know, I was in there the other day for the longest time, and then finally they said, here's where you made your first mistake. I said, my mistake? You know, how come it's always my mistake? Don't you ever make a mistake? They said, yeah. I said, when did you ever make a mistake? They said, when we let you have the checking. You know, <laughs> you know it isn't fair. A banker tells a few bad jokes, nobody says anything, but a comic pass a few bad checks. <laughs> you never hear the end of it. But I get to thinking back when I first got into this business and uh, it was tough. You know, the cash flow was minimal. And uh, well, I was selling knock knock jokes door to door. <laughs> but the cash flow was minimal and uh, one day they repossessed my car it wasn't too long after that, and they disconnected my telephone. And it finally dawned on me, I'm one electric bill away from being Amish. <laughs> but I guess if I've, if I've learned nothing else in my 69 years, it is that men and women look at the world in totally different ways. You know, for, for example, if you offered a, a woman a chance to either catch a fly ball or save a kitten from drowning, she will save the kitten from drowning every time, without even considering whether or not there are men on base. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this has been a crazy day for me. Uh, you know, it started early. The doorbell rang, and I opened it up, and here's a guy there. He said, is this the Anderson house? And I said, well, you know, it used to be, but they moved about six months ago. And he said, boy, that's inconsiderate. They call for a plumber and then they move. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, it was one of those days. You know, the other day I put in, in the, in the bathroom, I put in one of those ceiling exhaust fans in the bathroom. And I thought it was pretty nice, but the people upstairs are furious. <laughs>
They said, it's too late. I said, well, I've got to get a hold of Lenny Krasinski then. They said, Lenny's up here too. <laughs> I said, where is he? i got to talk to him. And they said, you go down the hall, make a left at the end, and go through some big golden doors, and Lenny will be down there. And sure enough, there he was sitting on a couch with his arm around a beautiful woman. I couldn't take my eyes off her. I said, Lenny, is this your reward? And she said, no, I'm her punishment. <laughs> Let me tell you something else too. Never buy fresh fish off a truck with Arizona license plates. <laughs> I was on a diet all last winter. I was dieting and uh, I, I took that powder stuff. So got down to 195 pounds come April it rained. <laughs> I signed up for one of those exercise classes and the instructor said he wanted me to come wearing tennis shoes and loose fitting clothing. I said, if I had any loose fitting clothing, I wouldn't have signed up in the first place. <laughs> exercise. The only reason I exercise is nice to hear heavy breathing. <laughs> Home the other night, here's a guy jogging in the nude in my neighborhood. And I ran after him. I said, How can you jog in the nude? He said, Because you came home early. <laughs> but if you want a good laugh, uh, uh, Bob Chaplinski was telling us about a hunting trip he took for what seemed like hours. <laughs> Bob said he was out hunting, and he and some other hunter both shot the same deer which almost never happened, but it did. And the other guy was mad. He said, I can't believe you shot my deer. Bob said, I thought it was just resting on your truck.
she's upset because I didn't bring home my pager. And I told her I bought something for the house. And she said, what did you buy? And I said, a round of drinks. <laughs> she resents my bottle collection, you know. She says, how can you become so attached to a bunch of dead liquor bottles? I said, I was with them when they died. <laughs> I did a thing two weeks ago up in uh, Toronto, and uh, afterwards I was up in my room, I'm watching TV, here's a knock on the door, I opened it up with some of the wrong room, so I had the wrong room. I closed the door, went back to TV. About five more minutes, there's another knock on the door. I open it up, the same drunk. He said, oh, I'm sorry, I got it to the wrong room. I close the door, back to TV, about five more minutes, sure enough, another knock on the door. I open it up, the same drunk. He said, what are you, in every room? <laughs>
But if you want, I did laugh at a bunch of us were talking before uh, about marriage. And I don't know, there are some things about marriage. Uh, uh, my wife and I, we, I just remember, well, we're married 40 years now, we're having our first fight. Started 40 years ago. <laughs> And I found in 40 years of marriage, I found there's three things that are very important if you want to keep your wife happy. Number one, let her think she's getting her own way. Number two, give her her own way. <laughs> Those two things. You see, I met my wife in one of those single fires, and what a surprise, I thought she was home watching the kids. <laughs> And we dated for like two years. One day I told her dad, I said, I'd like to marry your daughter. He said, can you support a family? I said, I believe I can. He said, you know, there's nine of us. <laughs> like this morning, I told my wife, I said, you were cussing at me in your sleep last night. She said, I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> I told you to get your wedding ring on the wrong finger. She said, because I married the wrong guy. <laughs> I married a woman that speaks 140 words a minute with gusts up to 180. <laughs> the other day I was disciplining the dog. She said, the dog's right. <laughs> she kisses the dog on the lips. She won't break out of my glass. <laughs> Plumber came over to the house. He said, "Where's the drip?" She said, "Upstairs, trying to fix a leak in the faucet." <laughs> I, I told the plumber, "I got a leak in the sink." He said, "Go ahead, get your sink." <laughs> Are there any questions on anything I've covered here? <laughs> Well, I, this is a very long, uh, uh, the occasion is just, just wonderful, Bernice, and uh, it, it causes me to think of that great philosopher, uh, <laughs> I can't think of his name right now, uh, but at any rate, he said, I, I guess I can't think of what he said either, but it certainly was appropriate. Uh, so I want to I want to close my part of your program here tonight with number one, I, I, Bernice. I uh, uh, hope your retirement is just wonderful for you. And I want to close with two comments on the serious side. Number one, I, I believe uh, uh, the world would be a better place today if we had a little more in three areas, and they are moderation, toleration, and 